What's up, witches? I'm Allie, aka Bronx Witch, and welcome back to my channel, where you are the magic, and where I talk about witchcraft, tarot, and other spiritual topics to help you on your journey. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make the sea moss gel that I take every day, and how I get it to come out perfectly every time. In my reintroduction video a few weeks ago, I mentioned that I would be making more videos about physical health because I feel, no, I know that my physical and spiritual health are intimately connected. And obviously you don't have to take CMOS to be physically healthy, but man, does it help. I'm going to be making some more videos about my CMOS journey, the benefits of taking CMOS that I've seen in my own health and body, and ideas on the different recipes I use to make taking it more fun and interesting. But for now, let's just start with the basics. How the heck do you use sea moss in the first place? When you first encounter it, it might not look like anything you've ever seen before, except for maybe floating near the sand at the beach. And that's cause that's exactly what it is. Sea moss is the highly nutritious algae that grows in shallow coastal waters. And once it's dried out and packaged, it kind of looks like a weird grass or hay. It's dry and gnarly and definitely would be really difficult to eat in this state. So the most common way of consuming it is to make it into a smooth gel that you can take on its own or add to foods like smoothies and stews. You might be curious about trying sea moss, but a little intimidated about making your own gel. And I am here to tell you that it's literally one of the easiest things you can do. And if you follow my method, it will come out perfectly every time. Let's start with what you need. To make a one week supply of sea moss gel, you need about one ounce by weight of a quality dry sea moss, like the gold sea moss from St. Lucia that I sell in the bodega, filtered water or spring water to wash your moss, one to two cups of spring water to make your gel, and a 16 ounce glass jar to put it in. That's it. Now keep in mind that you'll need to let your moss sit, so remember to factor in about 12 hours of prep time, which might sound like a lot, but I promise this is so easy, it's ridiculous. Okay, first, take one ounce of dry sea moss. My sea moss comes packaged in a one week supply, four week supply, and eight week supply and each one is measured exactly. So I don't need to measure this. I know that a one week supply package from my shop is exactly one dry ounce. Empty the whole package into a bowl and add filtered water to wash it. You wanna remove any excess salt, sand, or ocean bits that might still be present. And if you're not using my gel, that could take a few washes, but honestly, if you use mine, you will genuinely only need to wash it once because it's already so clean. After one wash, you will see the water go from cloudy to clear. Next, take your washed sea moss and add it to a container to soak overnight. I like to use the same glass jar I'm going to store it in because easy peasy. Next, fill the container with spring water to rehydrate it and put it in the fridge. Notice that I used filtered water to wash the moss, but then I used spring water to rehydrate it. You wanna use the cleanest source of water you can to rehydrate your moss and make your gel because this is the water you're going to be consuming. I live in New York City and they add a lot of chemicals like chlorine and fluoride to the water, which I don't really want in my gel. My filtration pitcher gets rid of some of it, which is why I use that water to wash off my moss, but it doesn't get rid of everything. And before you ask why I don't use distilled water, the reason is kind of personal. I just want my water to still feel alive. It's an energy thing. If distilled water works better for you, then that's fine. I'm going to leave my moss in the fridge for about eight hours overnight. And when I come back, it's going to be fluffy, soft, and rehydrated and ready to be jellified. Is that a word? 
general saying, but I'm going with it. I pour off my water and add fresh water to make the gel. But feel free to use the same water you left it soaking in. I just find that you remove even more of the oceany taste if you pour this water off and blend with new water. To my blender, I'm adding my rehydrated moss and one cup of spring water. Now, I'm extra and I have to put my spin on everything I do. So recently, I started experimenting with adding dried fruits and herbal powders to my moss for additional health benefits. My favorites right now are goji berries and dragon fruit powder, but feel free to get wild with it and try new things. Fresh fruits and herbs are okay to use as well, but I find that they shorten the shelf life of the gel. So if you want to make sure that your gel stays fresh in the fridge for a full 10 to 14 days, opt for dry over fresh. This time I'm adding several teaspoons of dried dragon fruit powder. And then I blend, blend, blend. I will stop and add a splash of water as I go if it looks a little too thick. And I stop adding water when I get this milkshake consistency. This is perfect. Now what happens if you add, quote, too much water? Well, the good news is there's really no such thing. Your gel might be a little runnier than this, but that doesn't change the quality of your gel at all. If you start with a one ounce by dry weight measurement, rehydrate for eight hours, and add one cup of water with a few splashes along the way, you'll get a perfect blend each time. Now I can use this just like this, but to get that gel consistency, I'm going to put this into the fridge for a few hours. I find that four hours is perfect and it will become thick and a solid gel that's easy to use and measure. Here we go. Look at that perfect gel, smooth and solid. You can take this as it is. The recommended amount is two to four tablespoons a day in the morning. I take two a day. Sometimes when I'm in a rush, I just take it on its own. And before you ask, what does it taste like? But, <laughs> just kidding. It really tastes like a bunch of nothing. Soaking it overnight eliminates any ocean taste and it really just tastes like nothing. And if you mix dry fruits or herbs, then it will kind of just taste like whatever you put in it. So don't be scared. When I'm a little more organized in the morning and I have time, I like to blend my sea moss gel into a simple fruit smoothie that I take with me to HQ and drink as my first meal of the day. The rest stays in the fridge for daily use. This 16 ounce jar will last me seven to 10 days and it has a shelf life of like 10 to 14 days. It's not going to last forever, so make sure to take it. And make sure to check your moss for freshness every day. Give it a sniff, make sure there are no changes in smell or color, and throw it away if you have any concerns. Thank God, sea moss is abundant and affordable. So always make safe, smart choices. You can always buy more and try again. I've included links in the description so you can grab your sea moss from my shop, The Bronx Witch Bodega. Every order from me comes with an instructional card with written directions to make your gel and more info. And each package includes an exclusive QR code on the back where you can reorder your sea moss at a discount. I want people to not just start their sea moss journey, but stick with it. So I figured that this will make it easier and more affordable for you guys to keep it up. All right, witches, I think that's everything you need to know to make the perfect sea moss gel every time. Click the link in the description box to order your sea moss from the bodega. Drop questions and comments down below and let me know if you'd like more videos about sea moss. What do you want to know? Remember to subscribe, like, and click the bell. For anything else, just head to bronxwitch.com. See you in the next video and blessed be.